Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Kativ's Autodesk Virtual Academy. I'm Nigel Mbayek, your host for today and all days. Today, I'm joined by Jose Perez. Hey, how's it going, Jose? Hey, how are you doing, Nigel? Yeah, I see you like every day, anyways. Like yeah. we, we sit next to each other at the office, anyways. But uh, yeah, so um, today's actually really interesting. I'm actually in our AVA studio fishbowl, so I like to call it because there's a full glass wall right in front of us. Um, that just happens to be populated by about 30 of our colleagues. So if you hear any background noise, um, definitely that's who it is. Um, but um, today we're going to have a great session. We're going to be talking about some user-defined properties in Autodesk Vault. Um, and if you don't know what that is, I'm sure Jose will explain that here in a little bit. Um, for those of you who are returning AVA attendees, definitely welcome back. And for those of you who uh, maybe haven't been to one of these before, um, let me give you the lowdown of how this usually works. So we built AVA as you know our one-of-a-kind learning experience. It's once a week to get our customers, or not even just customers, anyone in the Autodesk community to be able to leverage the most out of the tools that they own today. Things like uh, Inventor, AutoCAD, Vault, uh, mainly manufacturing and sometimes uh, architectural solutions as well. So definitely we are for the community. If you have anything to add, uh, maybe to the presentation. We do want to keep this as communal as possible. Let us know in the uh, Q&A if you maybe have something to add. Um, maybe you have a couple of questions here or there. We'll definitely get to those um, when we do at the end. I see a lot of uh, familiar names here. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Um, definitely welcome back. I know, Jose, you've talked to a couple of these people in the oh, last yeah. like week or so doing their vault cares. So just want to give you a little bit of background on on who Jose is here and what, what he does on the team. <clears throat> You might have spoken to Jose maybe before on our support team. Jose sp specializes in a lot of the data management products, Vault, Fusion Lifecycle. Um, and he's one of our main AEs who do our Vault services, uh, meaning people who need Vault upgrades, people who do Vault cares. Jose is your guy. Um, he does all of the upgrades, the, uh, the updates and stuff for those people. Um, so definitely, uh, if you are looking for any Vault guidance, he's, he's the guy to be there, which is why I chose him for this particular webcast. Um, <laughs> much to his happiness. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anything else to add, Jose, before we get started? Yeah, I just wanted to add here, it's, it's not always uh, Vault. Uh, we do like to personalize these or tailor these to, to the audience, basically yeah. our community here. If there's any subjects that uh, you're running into or having troubles with, just let us know. Send us an email during the Q&A, let us know. Uh, we do that. take that into consideration and, and then apply it to, to our list of AVAs that we do. Yeah, definitely. And even if you have a question that might be related to another Autodesk product has no relation to this session at all, definitely let us know. Um, and if we have time, um, we'll go ahead and cover those. If yeah. not, um, I'll make sure to follow up with those afterwards, um, you know, via phone call or something. Or, so, yeah, or email. We'll, exactly. we'll, we'll definitely reach out. Exactly. So I think with that, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll pass the torch on to Jose to get going. But like I mentioned, any questions, go ahead and type them into the chat panel at any time, and we'll take care of those for you. Yeah, thanks, Nigel. Uh, and like Nigel mentioned at the beginning, uh, we're talking today about user-defined properties in Vault. And to start off, uh, we do have customers, like Nigel said, that are using Vault. We take care of their Vault. We set up their Vault. Um, so so they're, they're going. But we do also have customers that are moving into Vault, uh, are, are on the fence about whether or not they want to use it, um, So if or are just starting out using it. So this is one of the topics we felt would, would be helpful to them, or even if you're using the vault uh, and running into any issues with, with properties, them not, not mapping properly or, or going between the files, um, you know, the way they intended to, maybe something in here uh, when we set it up will we'll help you figure that out. Yep. And then I think, I think really just as important, right, not necessarily creating these mapped properties from Autodesk products to vault, but you can even create custom properties and map them to you know, other metadata from foreign CAD files too. Mm -hmm. um, there are ways to do that. So if you're concerned about, uh, I've got some legacy SOLIDWORKS files, maybe that's not even a big deal. We can we can help you yeah. sort that out. And we'll see that we'll see that when we're mapping uh, later on. But I just wanted to to get into what what vault properties are. And like Nigel mentioned, it is metadata. It's tied to the files uh, that you're using. It's tied to categories inside the vault. And it's tied to, to items and ECOs. And I have a little asterisk there because items are are available only in work group and professional and ECOs are only available in professional. So if you're using the basic version of Vault, you won't have access to those. But uh, metadata is used basically to, to describe or be tied to, to this, this entity that you're using, whether it be a file or a category um, with, with different descriptors um, inside the Vault. 
Um, yeah. And just real quick, generally, I like to describe metadata. People always ask me, it's like, what is metadata? Mm -hmm. um, the, the easiest way to describe metadata is it's data about your data. Um, I know that's kind of redundant, but that, that's essentially what it is. It's information about your actual files. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so it's tied to, to whatever you're using it on. And we'll see uh, here uh, that the, the ABA is on user-defined properties. And that's because in Vault, you have two different kinds of properties. You'll have what are called system-defined properties, and you'll have user-defined properties. Uh, and if we actually, we'll go into my client here. Um, and in Vault, you'll see that Vault actually separates them for you. Uh, you'll see the system properties on, on your uh, right-hand side at the top. But if you scroll down, you'll have your user-defined properties here. You'll have properties that uh, you as a user will be able to edit and uh, set different properties to them. Some of them can even be pull-down uh, lists. We'll, we'll go over that later on. But the differences here between uh, system-defined properties and user-defined properties um, is basically system-defined properties are always enabled in the vault. You can't turn them off. You can't um, hide them uh, on in your vault client, um, unlike user-defined properties, which we'll see. Um, you are able to make them searchable in, in, in Vault, um, and, and that actually applies to some of the system properties, but not, um, but not all of them. Well, in, if it's a user-defined property, you, you can set that up as, as, um, as you want it. And then the last thing is you can have, a, in this case, user-defined properties are custom properties in Vault. You can actually map those to custom properties that are attached to your inventor or AutoCAD files, which we'll actually see later on uh, during during um, one of the demos I do here, um, and have that uh, map to, to whatever you need it to be in in Inventor. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A lot of times when when I hear about people trying to map properties, um, traditionally it's been oh let me map this property in my AutoCAD title block yeah or Inventor title block right yes. people just want to add information about their files to those blocks. Why? Because you need that information on that 2D documentation for the drawing. Um, things like, you know, custom part numbers, maybe cut lengths and stuff. Um, those are some things you want to take over. Um, and those could be those custom properties that you might also want in your vault. Um, so those get carried over with the items or the files or so on and so forth. So that's just a very common thing I hear. Um, I'm sure a lot of people on the call right now have experience doing something like that. Um, but Jose is going to show how to, to to navigate the vault yeah, to be able to, to do that. Set those up. Um, yeah, and, and like Nigel mentioned, uh, if, if it's something that you're trying to map to the to the drawing and you want it to show up, it's just part of a specific uh, group or something that you want to be visible on your title block, you can create that, that user-defined property and have it mapped there automatically without you having to type it in every time or have to worry about uh, everyone typing it in differently. Right, that or if it gets updated right in the vault, it'll push back. Um, in some cases, you can set them up that way as well. So um, you don't have some of these outdated files that maybe are incorrect um, later on. Yeah. So um, it, to set up a user-defined property, obviously not everyone's going to be able to. Some of the users will have uh, limited access to this. But you'll have to go through the tools and then the administration. That, that should be your first hint that you're not, not everyone's going to have. Uh, the ability to do this. Yeah, you I can't make the Nigel property in your vault, Jose. No, you can, unfortunately. You're, I believe you're just an approver on my vault. <laughs> but um, we'll actually go into vault settings here, and you'll see the window pop up. Uh, you'll want to go into behaviors, and that's where you'll find your, all your properties. Um, and when I say all your properties, like I mentioned before, it'll be the, the system and the user-defined ones. I'm just going to drag this over here. And as you can see, always, whenever I do something for AVA, I name it AVA. My vault is actually called Autodesk Virtual Academy. What? I use it here. Um, but um, you can see I created a, what's called a user-defined property. Um, and you can tell the difference right away, actually, between your system properties and your, your user-defined ones just by the color of the property. As you can see, the, the system properties here are, are in a yellow, uh, while the user-defined ones are um, blue. Here, you can usually edit them. Yeah, they got a little picture of a person. Yeah. Which, so I, I, it's hard to see, um, but if you do open up your vault uh, and look through the property definitions yourself, if you are, you know, one of the roles who can do that, um, yeah, you'll notice it is a person because it is a user-defined property. Yeah, very true. Um, and um, in this case, I'm just going to edit it, but you do see the option here to create a new user-defined property. All it does is give you a blank slate here. 
uh, named at AVA. And one of the important parts here is the associations that you're going to um, set for it. In this case, I have it set for file and item um, that basically tells you what, what you can actually associate it with um, in the vault. Um, you can attach it to items or files in this case, which I have set up. And you can see here the, the other um, the other categories that you can use to, to actually attach it to uh, folders, um, change orders. Uh, you can use it to, 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 um, to, to become metadata for it. Um, another, um, just going to go through the settings here. Like I mentioned earlier, you can enable or disable uh, user defined property and you can allow it to be searched or not searched. Um, I'm going to go through something uh, later on where we can actually save a search in Vault if we're working on a certain project. In this case, it's going to be AVA, um, just to, to have it at the ready. If we didn't have that enabled, we wouldn't be able to, to get to those files as quickly. Yeah, and I had a customer last week where they used some of this information where they had 15 facilities, but they had one vault, um, kind of controlling all of the documentation for all those facilities and facilities drawings for all of these places. And they created a special property of like facility location, right? Um, and that would get carried over um, from their CAD file, depending on how they made it. Um, and then they could do a search in Vault and be able to find all of the files associated with a single facility mm -hmm. um, using the search functionality. Um, and so they didn't have to dig through like 12 deep folder structures to be able yeah. to find something. Um, I know that I've done that in the past. Yeah. Um, and it's not fun. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll go through that, that save search function uh, a little later. But um, if we keep going down this list, initial value, obviously, um, if, if there's a value that 95% of the time is being used uh, you know, for this property uh, and you just want it to be carried over to the file, you can set the initial value to be something. It does, it's not uh, mandatory for you to set it, um, but, but in, in some cases, it, it is useful for the customer. The next one's actually pretty important here. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you can even you could either make the property uh, a text box. Basically, you can type in whatever you want, or you can give the users a predefined list of values. And here, what you you would just do is um, I'm just gonna say for AD, ABA, it's different versions of it. So UDP user defined property, and then user defined property. Yeah, and so for these for these values, you can have numerical values, you can have um, word values typed in, or you could have drop downs, like is what Jose is kind of doing for this yeah. list right here. And um, so, if these are the two values that you want in there, um, nobody else should be able to to add a different a different value for this property. You can enforce this list value here. If you make it true, users won't be able to. To edit those two, those are the two options they'll have. They won't be able to, to make any other changes. Yeah, they to can't it. hard input another one. Um, but if sometimes they need to type in something special, maybe um, this this list of values is going to grow over time. Um, maybe you don't want to enforce that particular list um, if they've got a new project that might have a different name for a, a value. Yeah, uh, the next one is requires value. Um, when you go in. Um, to, to the vault, you'll, you'll sometimes run into some issues when you're trying to change a state or, or uh, you know, add it to an item or something along those lines, and you'll get an error saying it doesn't match the, the, the properties that you need. Uh, it's because either the, the life cycle that you're using or uh, whatever workflow you're using requires that um, property to be filled. And uh, we'll see it actually, I'll show it to you on, on another file here. It actually yells at you, it gives you a, a red circle with an exclamation mark in it saying, hey, this property needs to be filled in, it needs a value. I think it's just a, a friendly reminder, not yeah. necessarily a yell, Jose. <laughs> I don't know, it's an exclamation mark. <laughs> um, and then the next part we wanna go over here is actually mapping. Like I said, these, these um, properties can be mapped to just the vault, uh, if we if we were to leave this blank when you create a property, it would just live in the vault. It wouldn't affect the files at all. But um, what we want to do is we want it to be able to, to be used in uh, an inventor file or an AutoCAD file. So what we do is you have to map it in here. Um, and I have it mapped here to inventor already. So uh, and I have it mapped to a property in inventor. Um, the way you would add this is you would you would uh, it gives you the two the two associations that I have here, which are file and item, which we said above, um, and then 
you have to choose the the provider of the file. It won't necessarily when it says provider, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, provider as we'll see later on. <clears throat> but um, you you have to choose the 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 type the of file extension, coming from yeah, yeah. the file extension that you'll be getting that you'll be using for it. In this case, we chose Inventor, and um, you if you're tying you if you're tying it to a property in the file. There's two ways to get um, a list of those files. You can either find a file inside the vault that you know has that property in it, or you can import it from a file directly. It may not be in the vault yet. You just select it. <clears throat> in this case, we're going to choose from the vault, and we're actually going to navigate there. As you can see, it's pretty deep in here. If I didn't know where I was going, um, it, it'd take me pretty long to get here. Yeah, and if anyone got that Magic the Gathering reference when he said from the vault, I applaud you. Um, I don't even think Jose got that reference. I Jose plays it. Magic the Gathering. He doesn't know. And I didn't get that. it. Yep. That's just something uh, I so, picked up on random. <laughs> so once I picked the file, it was an assembly. Um, you, it gives you the list of uh, properties that are inside that file. Um, they're inside the computer. Um, so if, if you look at the list, you'll, you'll see that AVA. Uh, the property itself isn't there anymore, and that's because it's already mapped uh, in this in this uh, in this property. So it's not going to give me the option to map it again. Um, it, as you can see right here, the property file property AV is in there. It'll tell you the type, which is text. Uh, classification is going to be custom because, um, as we'll see in the I properties, there is no AVA property. We had to create it uh, from from scratch there. And then the next very important part here is the mapping. Um, you have three options here. You have the option to have the, the file right to the vault, and that's it. Um, it. It lives on the vault. The only way to update it is to update it through the file, go into the I properties and change it there. You have the option to send it from the vault to the file only. Nobody can, um, if somebody changes it in the file, it won't affect the, the, the values in, in the vault, uh, which um, could be something that, that um, some customers want to limit just in case, um, you know, users have a knack of changing I properties and even though they weren't supposed to. Um, and then the last option was actually what I used um, is both ways. If it changes in the vault, it will change in the file next time somebody gets it. If you change it in the file and then they save it and check it in, it'll update in the vault. And we'll actually go through that, um, through that process in a little bit here. Um, so depending on how you're you're using this property or how you intend to use it, um, you'll you'll have to choose your mapping option there. Uh, the last option uh, we have here is yes, it's a custom property AVA. Um, it's it's not available in all files. Um, what this create option is um, is if the property exists on the vault, if you apply it to a file, um, and the file doesn't have the I property already created um, when it's um, when it's opened or saved, it automatically creates that property for you. You don't have to go into iProperty and then create it. Um, that way, um, you know, if, if you do want it to be pushed, it, it's definitely something you want to do if if it hasn't been used in the past. So it told told me there since I made some changes, even though I didn't really make any changes, um, that it needs to be re-indexed. Um, so it's something to keep in mind if if your vault is pretty pretty big if you make changes to your properties it it may take some time for it to actually go through and apply those changes for you so now we're going to go into inventor here and we're actually going to go ahead and open up that that assembly uh, i opened it up earlier so it actually gives me the option to to look uh to, to just open it up here so i'm going to go in Yes, I'm going to check it out. One thing you want to do is if you're going to edit the uh, I properties for the file, you're going to have, need to have, have it checked out and uh, in order to be able to save it and check it back in. It's telling me that the, the data may be out of date on this file. And I just want to show something interesting here. Now that I have it checked out and I have it opened, if we go back to Vault, we refresh here, it actually won't let me edit any of the properties. So before I could I could change the properties in here, uh, especially this user defined one um, and, and have it apply to the file. Now that it's checked out and I have it open somewhere, it's not gonna let me do that uh, to avoid any conflict um, with Inventor. 
So in here, we're just going to go here, right click on the on on the the file here in the model tree, uh, and open up I properties. Um, as you may have seen before, you have an abundance of of properties here that you can fill out. Um, but we're going to go to the customs tab here, and you can see that I have this custom a property named AVA with the value user defined property, and this came from the vault. We saw it. Um, we saw it in the vault that, that it was set to user defined, but we're just going to change it here. I don't like user defined is too long and we're going to modify it. Uh, now when we go to AVA, it is set to UDP. We're going to go ahead and save our file. Yes, it's under assembly and we're just going to go ahead and check it in. This is just to, to, to update the file. You know, um, we're done. I made my changes and now when we go to our client, before I hit refresh, you'll see here that AVA is actually set as an under user defined. But now that it's checked in, if we refresh our, our browser here, we go down, you'll see that it automatically updated to UDP. Uh, and, and that's that's part of that mapping. If I if I didn't have it so that it comes back from the file, it wouldn't have updated in the Yeah, if that was a one-way trip from just like Jose just mentioned, if that's a one-way trip from just Vault back into Inventor and not Inventor back into Vault, that wouldn't have updated. It would have stayed as user space defined space property. Um, so just keep that in mind. Sometimes people don't want that to happen. Sometimes people do. It really just depends on what your organization wants to do with your custom properties um, in the Vault. Yeah, so that, that was just editing the property in the file, bringing it into Vault. Um, I'm going to go over what, what I mentioned earlier uh, about save searches here. Um, the, the property is searchable itself. We're going to go ahead and um, uh, set the property that we're searching for as AVA and the value that we need as UDP. We're going to go ahead and find now. It'll find that there's an item and an assembly asso associated to it. Actually, it's two different ones. And the item that, that I was working on earlier has the UDP um, property assigned to it and then the assembly that we just changed. Um, but, you know, I, I, I was just there. I know it's there. Um, what we want to do instead is actually save this search uh, ABA property so that, you know, later on, if I'm not already in this folder structure, I can go ahead and just search for it. And the way that works is once you save a search, it saves the criteria that you set for it and it, it saves um, it saves it as a folder here. So now, as you can see, you have my search folders here. If we go to ABA property, it automatically uh, gives you the, the files that are there uh, with with that search criteria. And it doesn't have to be modified if, if um, any file from then on actually gets that that uh, property. As I'll go right here. Uh, we'll go to this one. Edit the properties. ABA is blank. We're going to send it to UDP. And as you can see, I said I set the list earlier, so it gives me the two options of UDP and user defined. Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and um, change it here. It applies to to the um, to the vault and to the file. And you'll notice here that when you change something in the vault and you have it already downloaded on your on your computer, you get this these two red arrows telling you that you don't have the the file on your computer is not the most up to date or not. Um, the, the one that's, that correlates with the vault. You can fix that just by doing a get here if you right click on the file. Yeah, don't do that though, Jose. I have another thing to mention. You can do that, hit a get, hit get to look at the file. Or if you open it in vault, it'll tell you, or if you open it in Inventor, it'll tell you. It'll prompt you if you want to do that real quick, Jose, just out of fun curiosity. Um, if you try to open that in Inventor, do you have that file downloaded already? I'm sure you have it in your folder. I do. It was 10, right? It has to be through the vault. It has to be through, through this. Oops. Don't want to place that. Nope. <laughs> I want to open it. It's going to be 310. See, it, it still gives me the, the, the thing here. Yes, we want to check it out. Yep. Yes. So it's, it's going to ask me, it's going to tell me that it was opened before. It's not the one that the, the latest version, do I want to get, do I want to refresh this file? Do I want to get the one from the vault? 
uh, and it also tells me the properties aren't aren't up to date. Do you want to update those? Usually you want to say yes, just to make sure that you're working on the most up-to-date property. And if we go in here and go into iProperty, sorry, uh, sorry about that. Whenever I right click, it's showing up on my other monitor. Usually, um, <laughs> um, yep, this. Um, usually, usually I, I like to show the, the picks and clicks here, but it's not showing up. If we go to custom here, uh, AVA here is set up to, to, to UDP as it was set up to, to user defined properties earlier. So it did update the file. It, it, it is showing up properly now, like Nigel was saying. But um, the, the, well, uh, getting back to what we're doing, I did change this UDP. It wasn't part of the search earlier, but if we go into our AVA property now, it, it'll actually show up. Um, it, you didn't have to change the search. Uh, it automatically updates. Yep, that's pretty much a live window. Well, live too, when you hit the refresh button. Mm -hmm. um, of that search so it does remember that query anytime you click into there it's going to be able to search for the files that that query calls for um okay. you don't have to update it or whatever um it just remembers very 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 useful if there's a project that you're working on that has you know some customers use project in, in the subject line or wherever they set up a udp that that source them that way if all these files had that same property you can uh, use a save search and just be able to sort through them yep and sometimes you don't necessarily want to use you don't have to use custom i properties in inventor i know a lot of customers who um their property for part number might be part space no dot or part yeah. no or part yeah. number or pt number it's um <laughs> those could be like very specific for a company i know probably half a dozen people on this call have different callouts for part number on their files. And Vault doesn't automatically, if you go to the system properties for, or it's in, it's in user properties, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so. Part number. Yeah, you can have that call out to whatever property you have in your actual inventor file. Um, I know that changes for a lot of people, so definitely something to note too. Yeah. Um. But yeah, overall, you know, user defined properties are what you can make of it. Uh, we're gonna go back here. Um, vault properties, you have your system properties, like we said, uh, not as customizable. They're they're there and they're stuck there. Um, however, you want to use them, you can you can make them searchable or not. Um, but they're they're in the system. UDP uh, or UDP or user defined ones are are the ones that you can basically make do your bidding make sure that they're working for you and make sure that they're they're showing up where you need them to um, you can limit the options like we, we saw of, of what you apply as a user defined property uh, or um, make it a, a free text box and then we saw how you can map it from a file or to a file in, in vault you can make sure that whenever it's updated in vault it goes to the file and whenever it's updated in the file it goes back to the vault or any any of those combinations like we saw. Um, it's just um, a very, very, very versatile way of, of using properties there. Um, next steps, like I mentioned, some of our customers are just starting out with Vault. Go ahead and explore, or if you've used Vault before, create your user-defined property. Maybe you you haven't tried in the past, but like Nigel mentioned, you know, your, your company does use a very specific uh, name for part number or even something else project whatever you need go ahead and create that property map it out um and then reach out to us if you have any questions if you run into any issues or if this ava hasn't have, hasn't answered your question about user defined properties we're all here um to actually help you out uh and get through that it's true i am here most times most every times. thursday at 10 i am i am literally here um jose sometimes is in like Chile or something. So yeah, yes, <laughs> so definitely, um, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the chat panel anytime, or I guess now. Um, but there are a couple of things that I just want to mention with some of these user-defined properties. They are as powerful as you want them to be, right? Um, sometimes you need to use them for very simplistic things. Sometimes you need to use them for very, very extensive things. Um, but um, one of the most important properties, maybe not even user defined in Vault, is some of the information um, about ownership of files. So if you want to jump into Vault real quick, Jose. Yeah. Um, and that, 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 that goes for, for save searches again. 
uh, as yep. well, like Nigel was mentioning. There's a really common question I get, um, and I saw it came in today, is can I search for all the files that I have checked out <laughs> or anyone has checked out? So checked out, checked in, checked by, right? All of those information, those are properties in Vault. There's a system um, properties in Vault. Those are system properties, right? And so um, it's as simple as opening the search button, which is that find button there at the top of the binoculars. Maybe you can't see it. And you can do checked out by, um, Jose's gonna do is. Is administrator, that's what I'm signed in. Right, right administrator, or if you leave it as blank, I think it's any file that has that, right? Uh, can you do that? Well, so any any file that's checked out, uh, we'll we'll do that. We'll we'll do that that search. There's another search. Yeah. yeah. So this one is going to be just files that are checked out by me. I'm trying to remember back. Yeah, I have a couple checked out here. So it brings back um, files that are uh, checked out by me. Um, so it, that value is automatically populated whenever a user checks them out. Um, they have no control over it. It's it's going to be by whatever their username is involved. Exactly. And I see this being used a lot by people who may be the CAD managers of their company or maybe one of the supervisors for a team. Want to know, hey, what's Jimmy working on today? Um, and you can figure that out by checking who's what's checked out um, by. Maybe you're like, oh, where did that file go? Who has it? Right? You're trying to check something out because you need to work on it, and you're like, this is checked out by somebody who who has this. You can figure that out through here as well. Um, or actually just look at the file itself. Okay, once you checked out, I think. Okay, this one. This is the way. So sorry, I was so I'm gonna remove this criteria. And then uh, if it's checked out by uh, and you just want to see all files that are checked out, you just want to make sure that it's checked out is not empty. Yeah. That way it goes through the files and any that that have a value in it, no matter what it is, will go ahead and and, and pop up. In this case, you'll see that uh, well, I have files checked out here by uh, approvers, reviewers, um, and, and it shows them all up in our criteria. Um, I can't do anything with them since they're checked out to other users, uh, which is why they're grayed out and crossed out like that. Yeah, or um, if you do have the ability, there, there's some more security features, right? If somebody's on, say, for example, Vault 2017, um, Vault 2018 added a couple of uh, new users or new, not users, new, yeah, I guess users. Or new, um, how would you describe that? Per, uh, security yeah, roles. 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 Yeah. I was like yeah. security something. Security yeah. roles. They added new roles, and, and some of them give you the ability to do this. Maybe you want to give somebody the power to do some file or to work with some files, maybe do some explicit deletes, um, but maybe not give them the power to do some other things. Um, there are new roles in Vault as of 2018 um, that came out in, what, like April of this year mm -hmm. um, that allow you to do that. So if you're not already on the newest version of Vault, there's a lot of reasons to do so. Um, one, the biggest one, people are like, oh, I don't need to move, like, I'm cool, um, is your CAD tool. You cannot move your CAD tool further forward than your vault. Yeah. Um, and that comes up a lot, is people will install 2018 Inventor and have 2017 Vault, um, and they're gonna like, oh, it doesn't work anymore, why is this? And then yeah. they have to do a vault upgrade that they may or they maybe weren't planning for. Yeah. Um, so definitely be aware of, uh, of stuff like that. It could happen. Um, but if you do have any questions on, you know, is this the right way to migrate my vault? Um, I need some help with migration. Um, definitely let us know. We want to be able to share that knowledge with you. Um, if you do it yourselves or, you know, need us to help you do that, um, definitely uh, some, reach out. Yeah, something other very common that, that I've heard is, hey, we're on 2015, 2016. Um, we're fine using it, um, but we keep running into this one issue. Like, I mean, everything's fine. We're, we're working around it but we have this one issue. And then we, we find out that that issue was actually resolved in 2017, 2018. Um, and you don't have to work around it. You don't have to, to deal with it. Um, it. It's just a question of migrating uh, from then on. But um, you know, if there's anything you're running into that you think is wonky or even the updates for 2016, sometimes those will resolve the issue most of the time. Um, but if there's any questions that you have about the current version that you're on or what it'll take to, to move to the next version, we're always here to answer those questions. You can always call Lifeline. You can always call us, email us directly. You know, yep. we'll, we'll always be able to answer that. Yep. Or you can watch the AVA I did on like there's a vault upgrade checklist that we kind of like to go over. Um, it is for, you know, most normal upgrades. You're going to go through the same thing. But there's a lot where it's a little bit different. Say, for example, Jose's talking about, like, big vault migrations. Like, say, 2015 to 2018. It's not 
a simple jump to 2018. You actually have to do an incremental jump to something in the middle yeah. um, to do that. Because you cannot upgrade your vault more than two years at a time um, without risking a couple of things. Um, so definitely just we've got people on the team who've been around vault since Autodesk acquired the product. I think it was 13 years ago. Um, I won't say where I was 13 years ago, but I was definitely not working on Vault. Nope. Um, but yeah, they've been around that long, and they they've kind of it's become kind of their baby. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the gentleman who who says that himself, like literally right now. He's outside of our fishbowl. But uh, I think that's everything we need for today. We're getting thumbs up from people in the room. Um, Wow, thanks, Andrew. <laughs> um, so with that, um, I think that's everything for today. Like I mentioned, reach out if you have any questions um, or if you have any ideas of what you want to uh, see over the next AVA because it is the feedback that comes from our community that helps us drive the next couple of sessions. Yeah, the content is, is all here for you guys. Um, if there's anything you need to see, let us know. It might, it might even be that we did an ABA already, and it's all available on our YouTube channel. Or if you want us to do it again, let us know. We can always do it again. We've been doing this for about two years now. We've got 100 sessions for maybe those of you who haven't been around so long. Um, we have, I think, over 100 now. I need to double-check the number. It started in October two years ago, and we've been doing it weekly. So I, it has to be 100 now. Yeah. Um, you know, just based on my math, which <laughs> isn't very good anyways. Um, so with that, thank you all for being here today. Next week, we're going to be talking about iLogic. Um, for, so those of you who want to be able to start automating some of your design processes, maybe create multiple configurations of a particular product, maybe want to bring over your assembly files or drawing files straight into the, or assembly files or part files directly into the drawing environment, maybe already dimensioned and annotated. Um, be on the lookout. We've, we've got some good stuff coming next week from our good friend Tom Fitzgerald from Autodesk. So with that, um, may the force be with you. I know that's a week early, um, but I couldn't come up with any other cheesy jokes for today. So thanks everybody for being here and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again, Jose, for being here. Thanks, Nigel. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.